I'm headed up to the spring to retrieve my ax. The handle has been soaking in water because it is not straight. As you can see, it curves off pretty bad there. I didn't have to soak it as long as I did. It's been there for like three days. I steamed it once and it just didn't take. I just wanted to get the whole handle wet throughout. And this time I'm kind of pulling out all the stops. So I'm gonna do a few more things in straightening this time, which I'll talk about when I, when we actually do that. So I'll steam it for like, you know, 30 minutes or so till it's hot all the way through and then straighten it, clamp it out and put it in the sun to dry. Okay, so this is my simple steaming setup. I have a pot of water, not very much water in it, as long as it's not gonna evaporate by the time the handle's steamed. Two sheets of tin foil and folded them together to make one big sheet. And then there's this galvanized metal pipe here. And this is just like a section of old vent pipe and it goes into the pot to catch the steam. And you know, this is all sealed off. I might tie a string around here to make it work better, but believe me, the steam's gonna be coming out of the pipe. So then the pipe comes up here, it's tied to a hook in the ceiling. There's the ax and I have a rag stuffed in here behind the ax to kind of just keep the steam in the tube as much as possible. So yeah, real simple, it doesn't have to be complicated at all. So remember that the ax handle is already soaked in water. So all I really have to do is penetrate it all the way with heat. Steaming away here. Okay, so I'm just whipping up this handle jig here, and the idea is um, if I put the axe inside here, I have two straight parallel lines that I can use to visually see if the handle is straight or not. And I can move the handle either direction as much as I want. So I'll just kind of wedge it, the whole axe in here first, and then use little like shims and wedges to get the handle exactly how I want it centered in here. These Torx head screws are awesome. I mean, they st they're still brittle and they still break, but man, they don't strip out like the Phillips heads do. They're expensive, but you can reuse them. I reuse them all the time. Okay, so this handle is nice and hot now. Uh, the head is so hot that I can't hold it. So I think it's pretty hot. So the problem with this handle, I better just, I need to work because uh, I only have so long to work on this. So I'm really gonna loosen it up this time. And I'm really trying to stretch the fibers on the tight side to loosen those up while it's nice and hot and wet. I don't know if you can see how much that's flexing, but it flexes a lot. Okay, so I'm, I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm limbering up the fibers and they'll be more likely to stay where I put them that way. Okay, so now it's bent too far the wrong way, which is pretty much just what I wanted. I'm gonna keep working it here until I get it just about where I want it. Okay. It goes in here. Get this blocked in. I want to do this while it's still hot inside. Okay, so now I can really see because I have these parallel edges, I can get a better idea of how straight it is and where I want it to shoot. None of these wedges are the same, but it just doesn't matter. I've got, you know, there's a lot of them. I can double them up to fill in the spaces. Pretty much have infinite possibilities here. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna check this through the day because as the wood dries again, it may shrink and these wedges might come out. And I want these wedges, I want this handle in this shape until it's completely dry and then some. So that's gonna be days. Um, I'm gonna avoid putting it in like the front of my car or anything, at least for now. Although I may do that uh, like tomorrow or something to really dry the crap out of it fast. I made it as straight as I could um, to the extent that I can see it through these wedges here. And I'm just gonna hope that it stays straight. It may not because this was made out of a really small diameter log. So it was maybe four inches, I split it. 
and then I just took what I could out of one side. So the grain is like, it's like little half moons like this, and one side of it is very close to the center of the tree. Those two kinds of grain dry differently, and of course it warps, and I kind of expected that. But it may always just want to revert to that. But since I stretched those fibers so hard in the other direction, and really stretched them out good, I'm just hoping that if I dry it really, really thoroughly while it's straight like this, that it will end up staying that way for at least a while. All right, so the only other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some fat on the end of the handle, on the butt end here, because that's gonna be really prone to cracking as it dries, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna put some oil on that to slow it down, and I don't think the rest of the handle will probably crack if I just leave it out. All right, here she is. Uh, things are working pretty good. It's uh, been staying straight, and I did have to re-straighten one section right here, and it was just a small bend in one area. So what I did is I put that over a pot of water, put tin foil on top and steamed it for maybe 20 minutes or something, just enough to get it hot all the way through. Then I put a wooden block here, a wooden block here, and clamped it to the table so I could really just isolate and bend just this little section right here between the blocks. I've been using this quite a bit and it's been staying straight. So that's a good sign because when it's under use, um, it's you know under stress and the handle gets bent. So if I'm bending the handle, and it's springing back to where you know I straightened it to. That's really that's what I want. So let me talk about this handle for just a minute and try to put it in a little bit of context. Uh, again, this is not ideal that I got this you know small diameter piece of wood with a funny shaped grain that's got a real strong curve to it because the two sides of the handle here are going to behave differently. The fibers on one side shrunk and became short. So you think of like short fibers on one side and long fibers on the other side, and you end up with a curve this way. So what I was doing with the limbering is trying to undo that memory completely by making the fibers on the short side as long as the fibers on the long side. If this gets subjected to a lot of changes in humidity and temperature, which it no doubt will over time, it's probably going to end up migrating back a little bit and warping. I'm sure, quite sure if I left it outside and really just had a lot of changes in humidity, eventually it would definitely warp. But that doesn't mean I can't re-straighten it too. And this handle was just kind of an experiment and just something to get me a quickie green axe handle to use. The handle also has a bunch of knots in it. And there's two that are pretty crucial spots. This one is right up near the edge and it goes all the way through. And there's another one here that comes from the side. It's a pretty good size knot and it comes out right here. And there's a little crack on it. Yeah, not great. So this is a really vulnerable spot. Anything along this edge right here, which is uh, flexes a lot when you're, you're hitting something. And that's not good. So I could probably put on a piece of rawhide here and shrink this down real tight. And that would definitely help compress this and probably completely ensure that that knot never breaks. Um, I might, but I probably won't. Um, I just don't really care that much if this handle breaks. And I'm kind of just curious. For me, curiosity trumps fear. Um, if you go through life, I, Approaching projects like this with the mindset that you're going to do everything right every time to make everything as perfect as possible, you're not going to find out what you can get away with. I'm always asking the question, what can I get away with? Because that information is extremely valuable to me. There's this whole Boy Scout thing of the one match fire. So if you approach your whole life uh, with the one match fire attitude, like you should always be able to make a fire with one match every single time. I mean, translated to that you should make every fire with one match every time. How do you know that what you think you know is even true? If you spend, make some of your fires where you just grab a bunch of crap and, and like throw a match on it and then try to scramble around to make it work, you're going to learn a lot of stuff. So think of this like that. You know, I used a piece of wood that I've never heard of anyone making tool handles out of before. Um, it was not an ideal piece of wood to start with. It has numerous knots, some of them in critically, you know, weak places. Uh, I don't just don't care. I don't care that much if it breaks. It was fun to make it. Um, I can make another one. I want to make more axe handles. Uh, I'm just curious. I want to know what happens, basically. That's what it comes down to. I want to know what happens. So where to go from here? Um, I was planning to make a bunch of handles this season. I have about a third of a cord here and a little bit more over there, but I'm behind schedule on getting my wood cut by June 1st. That's just, it just takes a long time to cut wood with an ax. So I think uh, for me, I'm, I'm interested in uh, playing with candles that have just a curve right here. I've seen that on a lot of traditional handles, ax handles, and it just kind of makes sense to me ergonomically, especially for bucking between your legs like this. 
And uh, yeah, that's probably the next thing I'm gonna experiment with and then maybe just changing lengths. Yeah, this one's 30 inches. Uh, maybe playing with like between 28 and 29 inches to see how that feels. This axe is working out okay. And uh, it's certainly capable of doing plenty of work and I can get the stuff I want to do done with it. So, I'll see you guys later.